Okay, for folks joining this live stream, we are talking about features for the upcoming version of Wolfram Language that involve functions that return results that involve uncertainty. Uh, uncertainty being represented by our round wrapper. So let's take a look at an example here. So the age of the Earth, which is not precisely known. Exactly. So the, the two big groups of functions, one of the two big groups of functions is, is Wolfram Alpha returning results with explicit errors. And this is an example. Mm -hmm. So currently this is being done using precision, numerical precision. Yes. And... Um, it's not completely stupid, by the way. No, no, not at all. I mean, it, this is something that can store the information needed. The only issue is then that when it's propagated, it doesn't follow the rules of um, the uncertainty. Uh, right. As we want it to be propagated. What is the difference between precision propagation rules and uncertainty propagation rules? The uncertainty propagation rules uh, assume a normal distribution so it's all uh, via square roots of uh, squares of derivatives. Okay. Whereas, Whereas precision assumes precision. what? Um, intervals, and it's trying to always get the interval that would cover. I see. So it's it's like one of them is a box distribution, and the other one is some kind of normal is a normal distribution. Is exactly. that right? Yeah. And and the precision case isn't worried if it goofs up and makes its box a bit bigger than it should have been. Is that a right. true statement? Y yes. And in fact, there are some cases in which it, it, it depends on the formula, the, the uncertainty one may be a bit larger. Depending on some cases in which uh, there are the second derivatives uh, enter the game, etc. So, yeah, so here we see how this would be represented with, um, with a round. And you see that this is using already the type setting in which the error is represented smaller and centered. The fact that it's smaller, it looks nice. I'm not so sure. I I, I don't get used to the fact that it's centered. It, I agree. It doesn't look right if it's yeah. followed by something. It looks misplaced. Yeah. Is anybody from design on this call? I, I don't think so, because this was going to be... Um, more All right. I, I think they should try it without it centered. And I think also it's too, the distance before the plus minus is too large. Um, and I agree with you that it needs some parens, maybe mm -hmm. light gray parens of some kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in this case, I, I, I copied from the Wikipedia some similar uh, results, and, and they don't use parentheses, but I, I've seen parentheses used in many books because it's clearer. Yeah, I think it's clearer. I think if they're light gray parentheses, I think that will look nice. I mean, I also point out that were we to have to say times 10 to the 9 years, we really don't have much of a choice but to use parentheses. Right. Okay. Yes. So this is a question. I was wondering whether there is a connection here between the typesetting and the actual numeric errors. Because right now, Around is able, I'm not sure this is correct, but it's, right now around takes a number with precision and typesets it with, with around. I mean, converts it into an around object. object. What does it do with a machine precision number? Uh, nothing. Th there are examples below. So when they are exact or machine precision, it doesn't do anything. Okay, but if it's been given a stated precision, mm -hmm. seems fairly sensible to me that it would do that with a stated precision. I mean, as you say, they mean slightly different things. Right. One of them is the, you know, it's a variance, and one of them is the outer boundary of the interval. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering whether it should be a round form, which typesets as the other one, rather than a round itself doing the conversion. Well, are we typesetting or are we converting? At, at, at the moment... We don't even have yet a round form, but a round is changing the, the number. Right. I, mean, I think that a round taking a number with precision and being able to... Does a round have a second argument? Yes, it has all kinds of... 
Yes, the, the errors, of course. See, I have a feeling that there should be a string name for the second argument, because here's something you might want to do. You've got this uh, interval box for the precision, but what you really want is, you know, 68% of that or something as the variance. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Or the standard deviation, whatever it is. Um, I can imagine wanting a second argument to around, which is like the error specification, that some kind of automatic error specification derived from precision, but not necessarily where the error is equal to the precision bound. I see. Is Roger here? And can he comment yeah. on that? Yeah, I agree with you. Because what the, our precision tracking is deterministic um, bounds. So it's mm -hmm. a deterministic model. This is a stochastic model of errors. Um, and it's unbounded. With a normal distribution, it's unbounded. Yeah. So, okay, so that would be my suggestion. There's, there's a second argument that says something like... Um, I don't know, maybe it could just be automatic and then it would do something. What would it do? In, I mean, you know, I could imagine full versus automatic, where full means um, make the around bound, so to speak, be equal to the precision bound, whereas automatic means make it be 68%. Mm -hmm. okay. Do we need to report correlations from... Of now for knowledge base. It would sure be nice, but how on earth would we do it? Well, I guess the question is here is whether there is a case in alpha in which we need to report an around with a vector, and then the second argument being a matrix, like a covariance matrix. I think Michael will be the expert on that. I mean, I would guess that uh, well, I'm sure that when we return vector things, like for example, geogravity, geogravity vectors. I'm sure that they have correlated errors. Mm -hmm. I mean, whenever we're returning a vector, it's going to have correlated errors, I think. I see. I see what you mean. I think if we're returning, you know, I think that the scientific literature does not typically contain the information on, you know, yes, somebody, you know, if I look in the particle data book, for example, and I look at, you know, the mass of the, you know, F meson or something, which decays into this and that, and probably there's a, there's a relationship between the estimated mass of the F meson and the errors of estimation of some of the masses of its decay products. But that information, that correlation, is not reported in the standard sort of scientific literature, I think. Am I making sense? Yeah. So I think, I think it will essentially never be possible to do this, except when you're returning a vector quantity, unless I'm missing something. Do we have anybody from the Wolf Malfa team here who would have more comments about that? Um, Francisco, do you know about this? Uh, no, I'm not sure any of the domains I handle have that issue. So that yeah. kind of vector I, correlations. I, I, let me give you a case that might, okay, in, that is in your area, which is geo stuff. Okay, so let's say you say, or am I being crazy? Well, it's a little funky, okay? Where is that volcano? Oh, it's got an error of 100 feet in the position of the volcano, okay? Mm -hmm. But depending on where you are on the Earth, am I being crazy here? No. Near the North Pole, right, the error in the longitude, the 100 feet could be a, you know, 90 degrees in longitude, and it's still only right. 100 feet. Um, now, is that representable by a correlated error, or is that something different? Or is that just saying that the error in the, when represented as lat long, that the error in the latitude is small compared to the error in the longitude? Yeah, I think that's more related to the metric or to the, than to, to something that we could say correlation. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, the correlation, look, here's an example. I mean, uh, but uh, again, these are pretty exotic. I mean, something like wind vectors, 
where, oh, I mean, we just don't know this. People don't measure these correlations most of the time. People measure one thing, typically. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's going to be very rarely known. Yeah. So we, we, we could start assuming that this... I think we should assume there's nothing there. Right. So, Francisco, how, how do you see the difficulty in converting the current errors of Wolfram Alpha into a run? Uh, well, I, I guess in some cases we should visit uh, each domain because this is really very specific for each domain to, to assign some kind of uh, special output. And, of course, we can assign that to depending on the mathematical version the user is using, because, you know, we still support older versions, and this is for new versions, so it should yeah. be also supported, of course. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a, 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 a long-time tale, so to speak, mm -hmm. not to talk about the ones of molecular dynamics, but the, the um, um, this is, I mean, it's going to take a while to get all these done, and, and, and it has, we have to be very careful about this, you know, because we've been assuming that the interval bound is equal to the error estimate for most in most cases right mm. yeah, because for example i i wonder if, if in some of this uh, planet data we have etc in all these data there are some known errors for example uh, yeah. and as you were saying maybe there are even correlations between the masses measured for planets etc but i don't know if there is any actual uh, measure of the correlations really um, and how would this work? Would it, would it be a, an option in entity value that says, give me the result with a run? I, I think that's the design decision to, to do. So if we want to start uh, returning the the, around, the new around object for newer versions of Mathematica. And yeah, I would think so. But, but you, you have to explicitly ask for it. For which? Where? For, for a run. In the case of as a well, for now we could, should probably do that as a in the entity value thing. We should probably have it be the third argument there to be um, something like a round mm -hmm. or a round value. I think for the time being, because it'll take a while before all the domains are moved over. Right, and I, I think we need to be testing it on a few domains. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I would say some of the ones from physics are the most obvious. I mean, you know, if we say, like, like for example, let me give you an example. I mean, th this is a this is a very deep rabbit hole, okay? Because, for example, the Census Bureau has sampling errors, right, which they quote. Mm -hmm. And but but that's a big mess because, for example, it can't be the case that there are a negative number of piano tuners in Chicago. Right. So in other words, if they say the sampling error is plus or minus, I don't know, 10 people, and the answer is 5, plus or minus 10, that's very weird. Um, so any, anyway, I, this requires more thought. But I mean, this is not a bridge we have to cross immediately. I think what we do is to say a round value as the third argument to entity value and start from, from supporting a few domains that way. And, and, and now that you mentioned, many of our domains uh, use also time series. I don't know if we are going to support around as value of time series. It's a good question. Roger, can you comment on that? Um, is it a vector space? Is uh, what a vector space? The set arounds. Does it behave like a vector space? Yes, you can add two of them and you get another one and multiply them by constants, yeah. So I think it would have to be a project, but that sounds promising. It sounds like it would kind of work out of the box, but it's got to be tested. And But if it's not the vector space, then hell no. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, I understand. Your algorithms just won't work, right? No. <laughs> the, um, okay. For, for the third argument of entity value, do we have ways of combining them? So, like, if I ask for entity association, can I combine that with a round in some way, or is that more a Tony question? Or I'm sorry, say that again. What? 
So, so, so we have existing third arguments to entity value. Yes, yes. This, this is a typical example of a third argument to entity value. Right. There are uh, other ones. Yeah, go ahead. But so, so, for example, you can ask for entity association. I see, I see, I see. You know, and I don't know. That's a Tony question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wonder if instead of a third argument, it should be some kind of option. But it could be perhaps an option instead. But as you said, I, I think you know, we we need to just look at some cases where we can actually in, introduce these. Um, folks on our live stream are asking. By the way, can I run this stuff here or not? This is in. Can I only run the prototype build? In the prototype, yes. The type setting will be slightly different. Um. So, the question from our live stream audience is, will a round of pi return pi? And the answer is yes, right? A round of pi, of the exact pi. No, why doesn't that just return pi? Well, uh, try a round pi comma zero or some number comma zero. Because, uh, well, that, that, that uh, message shouldn't be there, but it is return pi. So, so the right. Okay. So this. So is why does a round of pi not just return pi? Because this is what we were discussing before. What's the meaning of a round with one argument? I see. I see. So, so that's if if we take a round of. So I think the answer should be that a round of a finite precision number probably defaults to make the plus or minus be the precision bound, right? In which case, it would make sense for a round of pi to just return pi. Yes, but we were saying that if we have pi with precision 3, then it would return an around. It's just a bit strange that sometimes it returns a number, sometimes an around. I mean, I sort of think one arg around is kind of silly anyway. Well, fine. Maybe we shouldn't have it initially. Oh, that is magnificent. Now explain it to me. Why does it have these things at the top? Why is there... It's only... A... I don't understand. There's okay. no uncertainty in the, in the x-axis. Why does it have? Why does it have things that look like star star? I think, I think that they're a little big. Okay. I, I mean, if you had ten ten of those, it would be more appropriate. So it hasn't been tuned. Um, okay, but what, why does it have serifs? That's one of the styles. So there's many. I mean, many those styles. are fairly common. Well, yes. I know they're common. Yeah, I know they're common. But I mean, do we want that as the default? I Is tend it? to think it looks weird without some sort of serif. But let's see what happens if I make. Um, what's that? Okay, so let's say. That's fun. It's. I think the serifs are too big. Because I think what you end up with, those degenerated ones are, are really looking silly there. Right? Uh, can you set error fun or sorry, error bar function goes to uh, the string bars? I think that's significantly better. I mean, I certainly prefer that. Let, let's make the, the errors a bit bigger. Why Why does some of them, is that an aliasing problem? Why do some I of them... Don't, no. I don't think that's what I've seen when I've done this recently. So Let's try making it bigger, see what happens. It may be aliasing, but... It's very weird. Uh, it looks like it's... It's a fractional number of pixels wide or something. You have 150 as magnification. Maybe if you try 200 to see if that's the... Or actually 100, it's probably... <laughs> no, sure, but... <laughs> you, are, you are correct, although now there's a new problem, 
which is that those things aren't centered on the, on the, on the lines. <sighs> okay, so there's some debugging to do here. And we really like the fact that the color, I, I like these vertical bars without, without serifs. I don't like having serifs when there isn't uncertainty in the X value. That's, that's not what they're for. You can have, there's just a style of, of reporting that's fairly common in various you know, science magazines. And I, I know, I know, I know. This is the one I like in physics. I think this is the most common one is without having serifs. I think they used to have serifs, but then they dropped them. Yeah. Because I, I think the serifs don't make any sense. Well, the, they specify the limits more clearly because you may have something behind the plot and then it gets confused. And when you want to specify uncertainty on the x-axis, then you draw crosses. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Well, all right, okay. So let's so, see what this looks like without, um, in this case, or ellipses. Right. I think those, well, I think the serifs are too big, but I agree that looks quite nice. Notice these degenerate cases here, which aren't too terrible. And actually that degenerate case is interesting because it reveals a use of the serifs. See what I'm saying? You mean that it shows that there is uncertainty? Yes, but the, it's very small. Yes. I would just reduce the serif side by one third on each side, by about one third. Okay. My suggestion. Um, let me see what happens if I go many more points here. <laughs> it gets slow. Okay. Let's make that much bigger. That's oh, quite magnificent. Looks pretty nice. So, what would happen if I if I put an uncertainty on the on the um, uh, x-axis as well? Uh, probably get crosses. Okay, so here I say around. Oops, I want to go around of n, comma random real. Like three, let's say, just to be funky. Oh, I love that time sign coming up. Okay, that didn't work. I uh, wonder why it didn't do crosses by default. Well, that and, and those dots are way too big. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. So, I mean, it, it, this is lists of arounds. Is that what right. it's expecting to be the points there? Can't the round be vectors? A round of a list? Uh, yes, it can. But so what, how would I do that in this case? Well, what I would do a round of the vector, and then I would say, um, uh, and then I would give the errors in a vector? Uh, yes. Is that right? Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean, that means non-correlated errors, but they are a vector of errors. Right, exactly. If you want correlations, you would have to specify a matrix. Yeah. Well, that's just wild. Uh, I think you have an outer level of list around, around... Okay, well, this didn't work. Well, I, I think that's, I mean, it looks like that's doing it as asymmetric in the Y direction. Yes, that's right. It's doing asymmetric. That's correct. It's doing this as an asymmetric thing just for the Y values. So it's not seeing that that's a vector there. And this is correct, by the way, that it should be doing that. So I think this would have to be this, wouldn't it? Ooh. I what that thing is. Splarf. Okay, well, so there's some bugs here. Yep. 
Does anybody know where I'm storing the stuff? Um, Uncertainty folder. We are certain of that, so to speak. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, okay. Okay, well, let's go back over here. So so the answer to that is, the answer to the question on the live stream about whether there are error bars is yes. Okay, question, is there an around version that will produce candlesticks in list plot? As a style for rendering the, the errors? Yes. Uh, right, do you remember this? I mean, so I, not at present. Um, I mean, for the most part, list plot isn't giving what does any interpretation chart? to. What does candlestick chart do with this? And what does box whisker do with with um, arounds? I, I mean, it would be kind of boring. I think, right. I mean, remind me what the definition. I mean, so candlestick has all kinds of weird stuff in it. I mean, candlestick no, has no. open, high, low, and close. That's it. The standard, standard sort of um, security data. Right, but is there is there an analog of that? I mean, you could imagine some weird thing. What what would the analogy would be with it? Out? I don't see there is an analogy actually. No. Right. I mean, the only thing I can think of for something like a round would be, you know, like you were asking about box whisker chart, where you yeah. could construct something where, based on the around, you know, whatever so, interpretation it has, you assume that I'm going to draw, you know, sort of a thicker box that go that spans, you know, the 68 percent yeah, quantiles, right. and then you know, lines that go up to 90 some percent or something. Yes, right. Well, that would be right, interesting. But, but it's but, really sort of an artificial... Yeah, it's 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 a kind of a fake. It's kind of taking too seriously the Gaussian. But uh, just one comment. We should make sure that box whisker chart points to a round and so on. Mm -hmm. and vice versa. Um, okay, other questions from the live stream that are... Okay, so a comment that's, that's made there is... Here, let me show you something horrifying. Let me show you something horrifying. What should this do? <sighs> I mean, probably it should just evaluate it with... Yeah, it'll just evaluate it, won't it? To what? That is what I would expect. Okay, but so if the value of, okay, fine. If the value of EPS was actually zero, then it will go ahead and strip the around. Okay, let's, um, let's go on looking at these things. Okay, fitting functions, reporting errors, that would be so magnificent. This is just reusing the same numbers that the parameter table is reporting. So this could be just... I see, the estimate and the standard error being combined. Exactly. So perhaps this is just as easy as having a new uh, property. Yes. Roger, yeah. Okay, yeah, that would be the right thing to do. If you want a, another property that then reports this, I wouldn't think compatibly change it particularly. No, I agree. But I have a question, which is things like fit and find... Well, okay, let, let's just keep going here. I mean, the one function that I think we absolutely need is mean around. So this is the section you just opened. Oh, okay. So, so this is an example of how to compute the mean and the standard deviation and their respective errors for a simulation of a normal distribution. Okay. So what's your point here? So mean? No, I'm, I'm just saying that it's relatively easy to compute. Um, yes. So what you're saying here is that both, um, uh, 
that both mean and variance. Yeah, okay, so this this is... I mean, it's, it's Gaussian. I think we can do all moments. Right. Sure, but, but, but what you're saying here is that the more general case is some kind of function around of, you know, kurtosis, comma, data. Uh, what is it that you want? So what I want to do, in the case of mean around, what I want to do is I've got a bunch of data here. You know, I've got some random real, you know. So you want it to have a different return than, than what's now. You want it to report its its own kind of uncertainty estimates. That's correct. I see. I mean, this is a very useful thing. This is a useful thing, and in, in I want this to return an around. Like that. Which is exactly what, what Jose has here. Yeah, so that should have reported zero, and it reported that, which is compatible with zero. Right. Okay, so the two things that we care about with mean around, one is waiting, right? Being able to weight the values here. Now, yes. um, uh, Etienne, who may or may not be in this meeting, I can't remember, said he already has a function that does this in the machine learning system. Yes, that, so that's the third section there, which is what happens if the inputs already have uh, errors. So the standard thing there is to convert the errors into weights and do a, a weighted mean. Yes, but, but there's, it could have weights instead of having errors. See what I'm saying? It could have, it could say this data point, I've got seven measurements, but, you know, Bill made measurement four, and I think he's a loser, and so I want to weight that one lower. But it, it, th there is already weighted means, right? I mean, we have... Yeah, weight, weight the data is the wrapper for it. I see, I see, I see. Okay, fine. Works throughout the descriptive function, descriptive statistic. All right, fine. So that's the answer to how we wait. That, that's that's fine. That's good. So so wait a minute. So has Etienne been using that or not? So somebody needs to communicate with Etienne about that. Sushma, can I you? I will do that. that. Yes. Um. Okay, that's a good answer, Roger, for how to put in weights. So now the only question is, and I agree with this way of doing it. I mean, I think there is no choice but to assume that the values are uncorrelated. It's hopeless otherwise. Um, so my question here is, uh, <clears throat> you know, this is a particular case that I think is very useful, mean around, but I think the more general case is something like this, if I'm not mistaken, right? You're computing the kurtosis as an around based on this data. So I think kurtosis and so on are a little tricky because they are ratios. You know, all the moments are not. They're just sums of powers. Basically. Okay. But, I mean, isn't it the case? Meaning it's not Gaussian anymore. The ratio of two Gaussians. Is no, I understand. Some kind of F ratio distribution or some such other thing, right? Right, right. Okay, so, so what you're saying is... In a case like this, we know we're lying by claiming that around is Gaussian. But if we just computed kurtosis, we know it's not Gaussian errors. Right. Interesting. But don't we know we're lying in many other cases, right? If we compute some transformation on an around that's, you know, a, a square of an around number. Don't we know that's not Gaussian errors as well? Well, there is some sort of projection back to to Gaussianity. Though the, the, the current around there is able to support two more arguments, which are two more moments. So the, the formulas I programmed are able to leave Gaussianity a bit in, in the approximation that it's small enough. Some sort of series expansion. Yeah, I understand, but which is fairly sensible. But I'm I'm saying there must be a function that you can apply to a you know a, a number 
that makes it deviate. I mean, for example, a very simple example would be the abs function. Right? The thing started Gaussian, then you apply abs, it's sure not Gaussian anymore. Right? If it had well, the propagation formalism is based on derivatives. So if you have a function which is not differentiable at some point, it's going to fail. Okay, well, that's what it what should happen. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. That's, that sort of thing. <laughs> that is not good. What are we going to do with this? Well, real apps would work just fine because it's differentiable where you want it to be. Well, what are we going to do with that case, which I just did? Well, that's magnificent. I think we should deal with this case too. An abs is differentiable there happily. It's just, you know. Why did it fail? Why did abs prime of five fail then? Well, because this is the derivative of ABS, which, which we doesn't need. know what it's going to be applied to. Right. But why doesn't that then evaluate? I'm sorry. Why doesn't, why doesn't it know after it finds out it's being applied to five? Why doesn't that's it know to evaluate? That's a good question. So we should ask that question. I don't know who would know the answer to that. Is that a a a wrong? Yeah, that? perhaps, but it's probably hidden in the annals, uh, sort of annals of uh, special functions. Yeah. Okay. Fair I'm enough. sure there is a long debate going back there somewhere. Yeah, probably twenty five years at least. Um, but let's ask that question. Okay. But in any case, I'm I'm glad we looked at this case. So. What you're telling me is that in this case, even though, so let's say I said this, for example, okay? So that's, of course, complete nonsense. And that's actually a good possible issues thing for, the, for, the, uh, for a round. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is all based on some sort of local approximation that right. works correctly around five. Okay, so in that sense, there's no harm in doing kurtosis. We can do the same level of, of faking for kurtosis, so to speak. Right, so try something like sign of a round of something and use three arguments. And what? the third one being small, so I don't know, 5,01,0.1, zero, one, zero one, something like that. 5,1,0.1. One, one. Yeah. So, so that's going to do a computation, assuming that there is a bit of kurtosis, which is this third argument. Oh, I see. So the, the formulas here can handle up to four arguments. So, so, so sorry, not, not um, kurtosis, skewness. So the third one is a skewness, and the fourth one would be kurtosis. Wow. Okay, cool. So, so this is prepared so that you can but, have a but now. I mean, people may be very surprised if they put in something like a function around with kurtosis and they think they're going to get back 7 plus or minus 0 0.2 and they instead get back this weird around with multiple arguments. But it, this is different. So one thing is computing the kurtosis, which will be a number potentially with an error. Another yeah. thing is starting from something that has a mean, a standard deviation, and, and a bit of... Skinners of kurtosis. No, I understand. But uh, okay, I understand. But what I'm saying is, as Roger has pointed out, the mm -hmm. distribution of kurtosis is not a Gaussian distribution. Given this data, the possible values of kurtosis are not, you know, we histogram the possible values given that the data, the histogram of the data. Right. If we ask what is the kurtosis of the histogram of the data, that is not a Gaussian distributed thing. But kurtosis is like it's a number of the data, right? It's a number this yes. the distribution. Yeah, but you guys are talking about getting estimates for the quality of those estimates themselves. Right. Yes, it's the estimator. I mean, there's some estimator there's of kurtosis. Right. The point is that that estimator itself has errors, and those errors are not Gaussian. Exactly. I mean, and um, and the point is that we can approximate those as Gaussian, although we're lying, so to speak. But it's you know, and 
I don't even know whether there is a sense in which for small values it is Gaussian. I mean, I don't, I don't even know what that means. I mean, I suppose that that you can, you know, the, the confidence intervals can agree, for example, maybe. I mean, it depends what you want to have agree. Uh, maybe there's a standard for how to do this. But, for example, the confidence intervals could agree. Yeah, there's also moment expansions, which I think is what your formulas are built on. Right. Yeah. Okay, but 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 which is a sense of approximation? Yeah, it's a parabolic approximation. So every every curve can be locally approximated by a parabolic or. Okay, so that okay, that's the Gaussian sense. sense. And so that that would work even if you just if you don't include the, the last two numbers in in his around. So it's just yes. a, a worse approximation. Okay, but, but I just want to talk about mean around is very obviously useful, mm -hmm. right? The question is, do we need some kind of function around or whatever that computes? How does it even do it? How would it do it? What would it actually do? So let's say we say function around of kurtosis comma data. How would you compute that? I mean, mathematically, I understand that you take... Well, the, these are formulas that are tabulated. So, for example, the formula for the um, uh, standard deviation of the standard deviation, mm -hmm. uh, I, I took it from the Wikipedia page, and they, they, they don't go beyond that. They just show those first two. So probably those are the only two that are kind of... No, no, we have functionality that will give you that. Um, I see. Not for ketosis, but for these things that are, um, let's see. Yeah, but I mean, are you suggesting? So, I mean, and, you know, we could have a, a family. Look, mean around is by far the most useful of these. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm even, you know, somewhat at a loss to see what you would use some of these other things for. Well, I don't know. I mean, like, like, for example, volatility, right? If you're trying to compute volatility and you want to know what's the error on the volatility, that would be some kind of standard deviation around. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. But so, so is there a general way, given a function... I mean, is there a general F that you could put in here where F is something which computes a value? Yes, there's derivatives, right? You, if you can take derivatives of F, am I, am I, am I correct? If you, can, if you can do some kind of, um, uh, I mean, I think this is like, right, if, if, if F is a function which takes a list of data and you know the derivatives of F, with respect to changes in the data, I think you can get the same thing. You, you can make the same expansion. Perhaps, but this get, these things get very complicated very quickly. These are formulas that central moment type expansions that get... No, I understand that. I understand that. So I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to understand what the design should be. And I think, I think what we should do for this version is implement mean around mm -hmm. And probably not worry about the other stuff, except I think it will be interesting to understand whether we want, you know, what the right name. I just want to have a, a short discussion about what the right name for this construct is. Is it apply around? Yeah, I think it is apply around. Because it's a... Oh, no, it's not apply. It's cons it's more like the construct case, right? It's F of data. Right. It's a round of F of data, comma, you know, some kind of F prime-ish thing. Mm -hmm. Sort of something like that qualitatively, although it's not quite that. Um, What what is the way we've got something which does a uh, a sort of a um, a nounified around? What is that construct called? The thing that that does the around? What is that thing called? Around replace? Yeah, I'm going to have to leave. Okay, um, okay. All right, so we've got around replace, but this is something else. It's around. It's more like around apply. Is 
that right? I mean, how does that relate to the around this, place construct? So, so this is more like uh, estimate this function uh, with around, isn't it? Yes. I mean, but you see, unfortunately, what I'm trying to figure out is, is that function is going to be applied to the data. Jose, thoughts? Um, well, I'm, I'm not even sure we need the function at this moment. No, I'm, I don't think we do. We're not going to implement this immediately. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make sure that the name mean around is not confused with respect to whatever we name this final function. Well, I guess the question would be whether we need mean around or some option of mean that returns an around. And I don't think we should have an option of mean. Mm -hmm. I think that's a mess. I think this is a really common thing that we're going to want. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mean around sounds great yeah. for, for the thing that is computing. So what about, maybe we should call it a round function. Of that common data. If mean is the only one that we are going to put there? No, I'm saying that the mean around is equivalent to a round function of mean common data. Mm -hmm. Like that. Okay, that will be my initial take, a round function. That might not be right. Okay. So, so, so how many things would make sense in the first argument there? Any function for which we can do this. Look, look, think about it. Any function at all that takes a list of data and returns a number, if it has various differentiability properties, can work here. Think about it, because data... So, so, so what we call aggregate functions. I, I think the general case is some sort of linear combination of moments. Because mean and, and standard deviation are just the first two moments. Indeed. I mean, you can compute it using moments. But conceptually, what this is, is the data, every... You know, the data are things drawn from a distribution of some kind. Right? Mm-hmm. And all this is saying is, I'm trying to compute for that distribution, I could compute the mean of the distribution, or I could compute the kurtosis of the distribution. And either way, I'm going to have an estimate of the error based on the fact that this is an incomplete sampling from the distribution. Right? The data is merely 100 points from that distribution. There is a true answer that would be gotten if I had an infinite number of points from that distribution. But this is, and, and there is an error that's based on the fact that this is only a sampling. Does that make sense? Yes, but I think there is a confusion here between functions that apply to each value and functions that are applied to the whole distribution, say, to the whole list. Well, so I'm, I'm talking about functions applied to the whole list. Right, that's the only thing here. Mm -hmm. This is a useful thing. I mean, it may not be particularly easy, but it is useful, I think. With my example of the error of volatility as an example. I mean, okay, it's all fake. And as you go to higher moments, it's the fakeness is going to be more and more obvious, I think. Okay, anyway, look, a round function is a possible thing. Uh, Francisco, you were saying something about aggregate. What, what were you meaning there? No, in, in general, uh, having this uh, around for aggregate functions, like, for example, uh, 
I don't know, uh, mean, total, etc. might make sense to, well, to have this what, what would happen with total? You see, total is a lot weirder. That's a lot weirder. Because total is not something that, you know, that, that's not in, in, in intensive versus extensive quantities in physics, so to speak. Mean is like it's like an intensive quantity, but total is like it matters how big the how big the data set is. Right. And it's much less clear to me what that what that means, so to speak. All right. Anyway, let, let's. I think we're good for mean around, and we'll have to talk about around function later. Okay. Let's look at this. Um, yes. So these are comments about the type setting. So the question is, what do we do when we have something which is symbolic? Do we try to make it smaller as well? I think so for compatibility. I mean, for consistency, I think. I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the other thing... Although I would like to see... Um, actually, here's a good question on our live stream. How do you do the standard deviation of a standard deviation with distributed? I think we have the wrong people to answer that question. Um, so the, the, the question would be, if we say variance of X, so I think what that would be is expectation a variance of X, but maybe I'm confused here. Standard deviation. Yeah, I'm not sure. Wrong, wrong people to answer that question, I think, now. Okay. Automatic transition with relative errors 10 to the minus 6. Yeah, so, so we, we discussed the previous time when to change this notation to the... By the, by the way, I agree with you that this sort of floating above the baseline is, is wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I like the fact that this is smaller and gray, but... Yeah, I hope that parenthesis isn't... The parenthesis better be the same size as this parenthesis. Yes, I think it's an, an optical effect that it looks bigger because the number is smaller. Okay. They, they are identical. Okay. 90% size of the numbers, something like that. Okay. Um, well, I, I think this is really good, a really good way to present this. Now, the question is, when does that happen? Does it happen at this size or does it happen? I mean, honestly, with this level of clarity in presenting this, I might argue that it should happen at digit four rather than digit six. I mean, listen, as you know, <laughs> to my great embarrassment, I have for all these years not understood what these high precision error things actually represented. So I never really, I guess I'd never needed to use them. Never needed to use a physical quantity to like eight digit precision. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I did at some point and I figured it out then, but I'd forgotten. Um, in any case, but this makes it very, very clear what that means, I think. Right. In the original design from Jeremy, the 89 was also gray, but I think it's better if we keep it black so that it it's more associated to the number itself. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think it it, it, it de-obscurifies it, actually. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to give the impression that 89 is already an error with some sort of error. Like yeah, right. That, that no, I think you're right. I think I think what you got here is good. Mm -hmm. um, so now the only question is what the breakpoint is. Is that correct? Well, and what happens when the number is very large? Because we don't want those things to happen. The fact that even though the, the, the error is smaller than 10 to minus 6, the error is still very large. So I think we need also an automatic transition to scientific notation. Yes. So that complicates a bit, I think. Well, hold on. But, but this case here, I see. You can't have trailing zeros here. That won't work. Right. Right. This this is wrong. This is crazy. This yeah. case here is crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so you're forcing scientific notation in that case, I think. Yeah. I think you have no choice. 
Exactly. And that's completely silly here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So do you, is it clear what the rules are for forcing scientific notation? I think we should follow the same one of, of um, number form, which is basically six digits. Beyond six digits, we automatically switch. Okay, but I don't know how that agrees with, with what happens at the, at the, when the error, you could still have a screwy situation, couldn't you? I think you can have, still have something screwy when the error is large, when the number is of order a million, but the error is like 10,000. You can still have trailing zero digits, which is bad, right? You never want to have a situation where you have to trail. No, I, I think we have two independent thresholds. One is the threshold to from decimal form to scientific form. The other one is the plus minus uh, to the parentheses. Okay. okay. Independent. Yeah, I understand. But, but okay, but my claim is you never want to have trailing digits in either case. Is that true? In other words, yeah, you better not have any zeros here that have to be translated into, see, what do you do if you had zeros? If, if you had a number, a million, right? It has a bunch of trailing zeros. Yeah. Okay. Now, if the error is 100,000, for example, Mm -hmm. How do you represent that? That should be, the only way I can see to represent that is 1.0 plus minus 0 0.1 times 10 to the 6. Right. Because anything else I think is nonsense, right? Because anything else, you're filling in zero digits that don't make any sense. Well, but we could have something like, uh, I don't know, a million plus minus 100. Yes, I think that, that sounds okay. Still okay. Yeah, I think it's okay. But, but okay, so where is the break point and what is the point here? Ay, 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 ay. Okay, so let me understand. So, so let's look at these cases. Okay, so around a million, a hundred. That's not obviously stupid. Okay, let's try this. Okay, that is pretty stupid mm -hmm. because isn't it the case that there's a rule that you never, I mean, typically you never want more than two digits in that, in the error in the plus minus piece, right? Right. Yes. And so here we've got six digits in the plus minus piece. Yeah. Okay, so we never should force that, we never should get ourselves into that position by default. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in this case certainly needs uh, scientific notation. Right. So what is the break point for, so if we end up with, so that's the case, I reckon if we have more than three digits at most in the plus minus in the error, then we should go to scientific notation. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. This is going to be a really wonderful subsystem, this around thing. Really wonderful. I mean, it's it's interesting how complicated the whole thing is and what implicit assumptions are being made. And it does worry me a bit that people will use this. I mean, you know, look, welcome to the world of insane error estimates, for example, in medical research. Um, uh, you know, it worries me that people will use this and assume that the plus minuses are correct and actually mean something. And they really won't. I mean, they're really only... You know, we have been successful over all these years with interval arithmetic in not giving people wrong answers for numerical analysis. Um, sadly, I mean, and you know, we, we had long resisted doing this kind of thing for exactly the reason that, you know, you get, um, yeah, I mean, what can we do to prevent, what is the analog of a, a you have run out of precision message? I mean, in other words, I mean, people are going to get wrong answers because the distributions are not Gaussian, basically. Is that, is that the only reason they'll get wrong answers, is because the distributions aren't Gaussian? Um, yes. Well, and correlations that they thought weren't there are actually there. 
Mm. Yes, but somehow that's in the input. If they don't introduce the correlations in the input, then there is no way of taking them into account. So, Right. But the case of um, people who do a computation that involves abs or whatever else, mm -hmm. and the true distribution, I mean, what we should show probably in the possible issues is we should show how the actual distribution gets carved up by, you know, by actually propagating a distribution through, right, through a series of functions, it, you know, because the actual distribution will be some complicated wiggly thing. And we're going to approximate that with these, you know, first, second order, whatever it is, error terms, right? Right. There is always the possibility of using transform distribution, which would get this thing correct. if it's Exactly. Computed. Right. Right, right. So, so my point is that in somewhere in this documentation, we should be showing people, or in some somewhere. Gosh, it's hard to know where what form of documentation to provide for this. But I mean, you know, people can use transform distribution. They will get an exactly correct. Let's, let's just do one thing, and then I need to get going. But let's do the transform distribution. Um, the uh, um. Okay, there's a question from Sandra on our live stream that's sort of interesting. Yeah, what does this do? What on earth is that supposed to do? I think I think this didn't do what you thought it did because it's it's a one over one over. I don't know what how which. Okay, is that surprising? Mm, no, I think it's fine. Okay, how do we do transform distribution of the same thing? Um, so let's see, transform distribution of one over x with x distributed as that the normal distribution. So is that the correct thing? Uh, 2.0. I guess the question it's not really correct actually because okay now what do we do how do we how do we get this so now if I say plot uh, try mean and standard deviation of that by the way mean around of this should work right mean around of a symbolic distribution should work that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, that's the difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we compute this? I, I don't know. I've, I've, I've seen this computation do um, amazing things sometimes, but it takes time. Yeah. It, it's hard computation because this is an integral with. No, I know. I know. I know. Okay, well, anyway, maybe we can come up with some examples. I mean, it's, oh, well, couldn't do it. Do you think it can do the N of it? Wild and crazy. Mm -hmm. So that is to be compared with one over a round of that, which will give 10 and something or other, right? Right. That's very interesting. I don't know why the why the integrate failed to converge. It's probably because one over x is an unbounded. Yeah, it's obvious why that fails to converge because near zero, where the normal distribution has lots of support. Well, there you have it. I mean, that's that's the um, that's a great example. Mm -hmm. um, that's a very interesting example. And, and we should we should come up with other ones like this to show people. This has the particular problem of including zero, which I guess it is what he was trying to to get. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but look, if if I do this, for example, if I go, um, let's do the more simple case of an abs. Let's let's be really kind to the thing. Let's say real abs of that. Okay, so now I say um, mean of that 
comma standard deviation of that. And then I say, how do I do, can I do N of that thing already? It is already in the machine precision because your inputs are in a normal distribution. Ah. Oh, I didn't re realize you were here, Gosha. Um, okay, so this is kind of like go crazy. Oh, how come that gave a result whereas the other one didn't? How come that gave a result? Oh, I see. The integration may be easier. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, real labs is a lot simpler than 1 over x. Okay, so now that is to be compared to... Fascinating. Fascinating. So how can I... Can I plot this distribution? Gosha, can I? Plot PDF over this, yes, probably, yes. So I just say plot of PDF. PDF, and then this distribution, and then some variable. Uh, what's it going to look like? Is it going to look like a, a, a Gaussian that's been sliced on one side? Well, it's taking its time. In a way, yes. So, uh, so you want to do the X. Um, I was going to say, does it need to evaluate? Or maybe not. Uh, it might, well, the question, well, it might uh, help. And the other thing is, it uh, if we kind of truncate the domain, we can use a different solver, but still the transformation should work. Hmm. Okay, well, in any case, I mean, it, it, it will be interesting to see what some of these look like. But um, the fastest might, what might work is to run a random simulation, so random variant on this transform distribution and plot histogram, and you get estimation yes. via the Yes, something. yes, yes, right. All right, I think I need to go, but, but I think, I mean, it's really interesting what is going to work and what. I mean, everything is going to do something reasonable, but it's it's just unclear. Can you give me a guideline for when it's going to give the wrong answer? Is it when the errors are large or what? Well, it's... No, I don't think that's enough. No, no, no. It's, it's basically the fact that we support up to four moments means that polynomials up, up to degree four will do more or less correctly. But once you are using functions which are not polynomial, some error is going to happen. And the more we are the function it is, the, the more error it's going to have. Yeah. But how do we know, I mean, the fact that we have those moments, we're not representing the answer with all of those moments, typically. No, there is always here some sort of parabolic approximation. So the, all these computations work locally well by by using the the right, but then in the in the final answer, we're just saying we're just going to give you the single normal distribution approximation to that answer. Right. If if you want more than that, you have to start with rounds with four arguments, even if they are zeros in the other two. That tells the system take into account the other two moments. Well, so that's very much analogous to what happens if you want to have a you know a precision thing with some high precision. You have to start off with n of something comma a hundred or whatever. Right, exactly. And we can explain that to people. The computation gets a lot harder because the formulas grow very fast. Yeah. So what I did is just programming the formulas mm -hmm. straight. So, so does mean around need a second argument that says how many moments to carry? Could be. Could be. Why? I see, I see, I see. So you have a skewed distribution, but then you're going to make a parabolic approximation to the skewed distribution in the end, so who cares? Well, I'm just wondering where we get a three or four... Well, I, I see what you're saying, I see what you're saying. You're saying that mean around could return a four-argument around. Yes. Right? Yeah, I, I see, that's probably right. Um, yeah, it would be reporting a bit more information about the distribution. Right. 
So that would mean would give you a fourth order mean around, fourth order around, so to speak. I have to say I would prefer that to be an option somehow, but I don't know what that would be called. <laughs> I can think about it. Distribution moment order. Something like um, something like that. I mean, is it moments? Moment is really what we need to communicate. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Super interesting stuff. Wonderful functionality. Thank you to folks on the live stream. Good comments. Thank you to people here. Um, let's wrap it up. Okay. 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 See you all soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.